native to Southeast Asia and today mostly produced in Thailand, this little fruit is a close relative of the lychee. The name Rambutan derives from a Malayan word Rambut, which means hair. Often consumed fresh, due to its short shelf life, this fruit is often used in jams or is canned. Rambutan only ripens on the tree, so the fruits you can buy should be ready to eat. Ripe rambutan might be red or yellow. There is no telling by color. A few brown spots are fine, but make sure that the outer shell is still firm. To peel the rambutan, you can cut a few millimeters deep along the equator of its shell. Then you can remove the upper shell and squeeze the fruit out. Now there is a sizable inedible seed inside. You can either fumble it out in the mouth or remove it prior by cutting the fruit open. The rambutan is sweet and has a pleasant floral aroma. The fruit is delightfully juicy. Compared to the lychee, it is sweeter and its aroma is more pronounced. Its texture can best compare to a firm grape. While in the West, you probably know the guava mostly as juice and it might be hard to find. In Asia, this citrus fruit is one of the most popular fruits and is consumed as a whole fresh fruit. It is readily available at supermarkets and from street vendors. The later often sell it with a chili and sugar dip. It is said to have many health benefits and is one of the fruits with most vitamin C. The skin of the guava will turn yellowish-green and it will become slightly softer to indicate that it's ripe. However, it might still be quite hard and it's not unusual to eat it green and slightly unripe. You do not need to peel the guava as its skin is perfectly edible. However, the fruit is quite hard, so I prefer to make slices. This way you can also see the three different layers of the guava. All of them have their own texture and taste. The outer skin is green and very citric, the flesh is soft but still quite firm, like an apple, and is slightly sour. The inner core with all the edible seeds has a texture of a pear and is mildly sweet. Rose apples are native to Malaysia and go by a lot of names. Java apple, wax apple and water apple are just a few. They come in two different appearances, a yellow egg-shaped one and a red bell-shaped one. Famous for their crunchy texture, they can be eaten as is or added to salads like it is done in India. Ripened rose apples have a lot of different hues. They might be light pink to almost a dark purple red. The lower part of the apple should be easy to dent. There is no need to peel the rose apple, but you should remove some of its core parts. Split the rose apple into four pieces and remove a white webby looking core part. Also make sure to remove the bottom flaps. Now your rose apple is good to serve. Rose apples have a crunchy texture and a tender taste. Chilling them increases the sweetness and makes these juicy fruits a welcoming refreshment in the hot summer. The apple have a slight fragrance of rose water and actually do not taste like apples at all. Mangosteen is only available during a short season. Be on the lookout during the hottest months of the year. Originally coming from the island nations of Southeast Asia, it is nowadays growing around the world in countries with a tropical climate, but is mostly produced in Asia, since its cultivation appears to be tricky. Its unique combination of sweet and sour flavor make it very popular. The fruit is ripe when its shell becomes deep purple and soft. The stem should be still green as brown stems show an overripe fruit. You can easily peel the shell with your hands, but it is very juicy and you might stain your clothes. I do it with a knife by cutting a few millimeters deep along the equator of the fruit. And then you open the cap. All that is left to do is to squeeze out the fruit. The mangosteen has almost no smell, but a very distinct pleasant taste. It is sweet and sour and extremely juicy and might be my favorite of all the fruits on the list. However, be careful as the fruit might contain one or more inedible seeds. Another fruit from the tropics, you can find it everywhere in Southeast Asia, but we also saw it in West Africa. These spiky fruits can get quite big and weigh up to 5 kilograms. It has many uses. It can be eaten as is, you can find it in sodas, ice cream, and it can even be cooked or grilled. It's pretty easy to check if your sour soup is ripe. Once the skin becomes yellowish green and the fruit becomes very soft to the touch, you are good to go. The sour soup has a lot of toxic seeds inside of it. This makes it a little bit trickier to peel it. There are many methods to eat a sour soup. The way I'm doing it is by making slices. Then I can see all the seeds and use a spoon to remove them. It is still pretty messy since the fruit is super juicy. The sour soup has a very pleasant citric smell, the flesh is juicy and has a chewy fiber-like texture. It is sour and a little bit salty. 
commonly called the dragon fruit because of its leathery skin and spiky scales on the fruit exterior, the fruit comes from a cactus and originated from Central America. However, it is nowadays also cultivated heavily in Southeast Asia, especially Vietnam. The common version of a fruit has white flesh, but there is also a pink flesh variety, although the differences are only in appearance and not in taste. The dragon fruit is ripe when it has a deep red or yellow color, depending on the variety, and its spikes are starting to wither and getting brown. The fruit should not be too mushy when you press it, as this is a sign of over -ripens. If you just want to eat the dragon fruit out of hand, the best way to approach it is like a kiwi. Cut it in half and use a spoon to scoop the mesmerizingly looking flesh. The flavor of the dragon fruit is subtle. It is slightly sweet and has no sourness due to its low acidic values. To increase the sweetness and make it more refreshing, you can chill the fruit slightly before consumption. The texture is crunchy and somewhat juicy. Sapodilla originally comes from Mexico, but is now cultivated in tropical climates around the globe. With its oval shape and brown skin, these berries look a little bit like kiwis. For many years, the latex of a sapodilla tree was the main ingredient in chewing gums. The fruit is mainly consumed raw due to its sweetness and pleasant aroma, but can also be used in cold desserts or dried. To check the ripeness of a sapodilla, you can carefully shrug off some of the brown skin atop the sapodilla. This should reveal the flesh, which should be yellow. You can eat the sapodilla like a kiwi by cutting it in half, but be careful. There are one or more seeds inside of it you will need to remove. Just spin the fruit along the knife. Open it up and pick away the seeds. These seeds are quite cruel and have small hooks. The flesh of a sapodilla is very soft and mushy. It has a texture similar to a mushy pear. This fruit is extremely sweet and has a pleasant malty aroma. Custard apples are also called sweet salt and sugar apple and are the sweeter cousin of the sour salt. Growing in tropics and subtropics, they are found around the globe and are said to be originated in Central and South America. They are high in energy and a great source of vitamin C, several vitamin Bs and minerals. When a custard apple is ripened, it out of bubbles get soft to the touch and its green skin turns yellowish green. You should be able to press the skin in. You do not need to peel the custard apple, however its skin is not edible. Your best bet is to cut the custard apple in half and then scoop out the mushy flesh with a spoon. However, the flesh is dotted with lots of inedible seeds. Use a fork or spoon to remove them. Custard apple's white flesh is soft, creamy and mushy like custard. They are somewhat juicy and fatty and have a very sweet flavor with a pleasant aroma. The fruit originated and is mostly produced and consumed in Southeast Asia with top producers being Thailand and Indonesia. The fruit is eaten out of hand but is also often bottled in syrup. Langsat is also used in traditional medicine. The seeds, the bark and the skin of the fruit are believed to have certain effects against malaria and other illnesses. Unwrapped Langsat has green skin. When ripened, the skin turns completely pale yellow and might have brown blemishes. The fruit will also release a pleasant and aromatic smell when ready for consumption. To open up Langsat, you'll be able to easily peel off the skin with your hands. However, the skin will release some white sticky latex, but it's easy to wash it off with some water and soap. Langsat tastes sweet and mildly sour. It has an enjoyable, unique but mild flavor which can be compared to a grapefruit. In the translucent flesh, you may find a few slightly bitter seeds. The texture of a langsat is close to a grape without a skin. Nowadays, the jackfruit is widely cultivated throughout tropical regions of the world, but it is believed to be of South Indian origin. The jackfruit is the largest fruit of all trees with a weight of up to 55 kg and a length of up to 1 meter. It can also be consumed unripened as a young jackfruit. Unripe jackfruit is green. As the fruit ripens, the skin becomes yellow and black spots might appear. Chances are you do not want to buy a whole jackfruit since it's quite big. If you do, you can slice it up in the middle and then remove the core. Your goal then is to basically wrap out and flatten the skin so the individual fruity parts separate slightly. Then, using a spoon or just your hands, you can easily remove the individual parts. 
make sure to remove the seat inside before you buy it. The jackfruit is definitely special. The flesh is very sweet and has a multifaceted aroma. It starts off with a strong bubblegum flavor with a slight hint of melon and banana. After some time, an oniony fragrance sets in. The texture depends on the ripeness of the fruit, but tends to be quite chewy. Thanks for watching. Follow us on our journey by subscribing and ringing the bell. Also, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up.